Brenda, see, this is where I'm a little confused. In that you you just quoted an RSA out yes. of that publication yep. that allows the planning board to hire staff. The, the question in my mind is, if you have that authority, why was it, maybe you don't know the answer to this, why was it brought up as a warrant article 14 years ago? That's, that is a good question. It, it, it is a good question. It's a question I've asked myself a thousand times. Because just, just as, a, as a side note, I read the head of the union today, and the police department just hired two new police officers as part of their staff. Right. It didn't have to go before the voters. That's correct. For them to hire two people. When I went back... Why is it that this particular staff member required... Uh, again, we probably don't know the answer, and I don't know it. Why did it have to go before the voters? And that, and it's, it's an excellent question. And, and again, I've asked myself that same question several times. And I went back and I looked at Article 27 in 1998. I looked at Article 20, at, at Article um, 18 in 1999, and I also looked at Article um, 31 in 2000. And I thought, why would you do that? You, we don't need to. And I was able to speak to a couple of the people that motioned it and that, and that seconded it. I wasn't able to contact everybody, but I was trying to hopefully get a gauge as to what was their thinking at the time, because clearly you don't have to do that. And, um, and we wouldn't have to do it in the future, right? Exactly, exactly. And um, I, I didn't get—I didn't get a good an answer. I didn't get a good answer. It was, uh, oh, gee, I don't know. I so and so told me I needed to. Uh, I need to, to to second this, and you know this is we're going back. You got to remember, we're going back to 1998. And, but has that book been in existence since then? Has, was that RSA in effect at that time? Um, I don't have that issue going back to that time, mm -hmm. but I could certainly find out. I mean, it's been it's been revised. What I can tell you is that it's been revised um, several years, um, going way back. So. The book must have been in existence at the time. Um, the, the, the revisions go back to, um, looking real quickly, um, way before 1980. Um, I, I'd have to, you know, look to, to, to give I you the... I, I agree with you, and, and it, was, it, was, it was one of those questions that I, I, I just can't answer, and I don't know. And I don't know why somebody said to themselves, let's put it on the ballot, unless they did it because if it, it, if it was an appropriation ballot. You have to remember back in those days, we had, a town meeting was a big town meeting. It's not like it is today. Yeah. This is what before SB two. Right? That's correct. Yeah. And no, it, it is not. SB two well, no, passed in ninety seven. Oh, all right. right, you're I'm right. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm just yeah. no, no. Mind. But it was a big right. deal back then to go to the town meeting and, and to raise up your hand and vote for things. Right. Um, and way way back in the, in, in 1998. What a lie. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, sir. It would deliver to sessions in 98, 99, 2000. I'm, I'm answering the general right. question. Well, I, thought, I thought I heard the, something. The votes that took place in the deliberative session were not definitive until the actual ballot took place in the session two. Okay. As it is today, it was then. We are not. No we're difference in the process. We're, we're not. not we're asking information. As it was today. The Mr. Same Jones. Process. Mr. Jones. Mr. Federal Jones. Right now. In 1998, I attended those meetings, and believe me, whether you whether you may want to look at it on paper or not, it was different. Anybody that's been there and has sat in those meetings from this time on, we all know that the atmosphere was different, the way that things were presented were different, the whole layout was different. So you may be correct as far as legally, but being there, it was different. I'm sure that you all, I mean, there, there's several of you here that agree, that, that, that are shaking your heads and you agree. They were more heavily attended in those days. Right. Uh, but to what, move to, excuse oh, me, Richard, one yeah, minute. Just to move this on, we're not debating. No.
that, you know, what was almost two decades ago. And I appreciate your getting into this and, and, and the questions that are being posed tonight. Because basically, sometimes you go looking for one thing and you find something else. And in this case, what we're finding is that that's the statutes, that's the guidelines from the state that we have to go by. That is what exists now. What existed then, I don't think anybody here was even on a board back then. Maybe Mike was. I was. Uh, but there's no sense in debating <laughs> that because there's been a gazillion changes since. I, I, no, I didn't think it was, Richard. I'm just saying that it was a valid question that you asked. And I want to just get back to you and again <laughs> remind everybody, this is a courtesy tonight. This is an extreme courtesy for one board to cooperate with another committee. But and I, I would like that respect shown to our guests tonight. This is not an inquiry. Thank this you. is informational. I, I, do, I do want to answer, and, and the, the truth is, I, I don't know why they did it, 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 except that it may have been put out as an appropriation versus should we hire a town planner. What's your staffing now in the planning office? We only have one person. She's an administrative assistant, and she works was it works full time and she has to put in overtime on occasion and so when the builder comes into the office she's the contact she's the contact and sometimes we have to close the office down because we we can't over we we, we can't go over our budget for her and for the and for the future town planner should we hire one um so there are times such as this coming weekend where friday they'll be closed and they won't open Monday because it's a holiday. So, you know, we, we're, we're doing what we can to get by. And all of us will stop by and try to help file something or do something that's um, simple to do. But as far as somebody walking in and saying, I'd, I'd like to, you know, build something here, I'd like to do this, we, we have to put them on the schedule for the for the PRC, which is the Planning Review Committee. It's an acronym for Planning Review Committee. And um, and then they'll go before them, and again, all of the department heads will come together at the same time on a Tuesday and look at it and say, yeah, this is great, but you might want to change your curb cut or, or, or whatever. So that process is done before it's presented to you as a planning board? That's correct. It used to be where they would just come before us and we'd say, okay, we, we're sending out the plans to all of the departments. Then they'd have to come back and then they'd have to come back because DPW would answer the questions. But, uh, and, and this is no, I'm not saying it's bad that the DPW or the, or the fire department or the police, I'm not throwing stones, but let's say that the DPW might answer the questions initially, but we don't get an answer from the fire department initially. So we have to send the plans back to the fire department initially. Um, and then they would come back and they'd say, well, we've got everything except we don't have the police department's recommendations, for instance. And again, this is it's not the order that they come in it's just that's I'm using them as examples so we would have to send the plans to the police department so that they could sign off on them and tell us what is right and what is wrong with the plans and it, it ended up taking a lot of time for the applicant <coughs> to come before the board and to for, for the board to actually look at the finished plans after all of the things that were thought of and signed off on after their engineer reviewed it and changed it, and then our engineers, who we hire through the town, CMA engineers, would have to look at their answers, and it, it, it was just, it, it carried on. And we only have a 65-day clock. When we accept jurisdiction over a project, we have 65 days to approve it or not approve it. And if we don't approve it, we have to have a legal reason why we don't or else we go to court and we get sued and the town pays money for <coughs> for representation. So what we did was we created the PRC so that the department heads could all, including the conservation people and, and everybody concerned, could all get together, talk about their problems. The engineer could <coughs> then fix the problems that were brought up and bring the plans back to the second PRC committee and then 
they would all either sign off on it or else somebody might have one more thing that they wanted done that would be a stipulation as far as the construction would go. And then they come before us, we look at it, and then we throw in a few extra things that we all feel like that, that, that we're concerned with, whether it be snow removal or trash or or whatever it may be. Um, it could be plantings. There, there's lots of things that we as a planning board are concerned with that the bigger people, the departments, um, are more concerned with their own purview, so to speak. Their own, you know, the DPW has issues about something. The police and the fire have issues. The fire <coughs> department has, needs to have 24 feet to go down a driveway to put out a fire. And they, and they want space between buildings to to put the fires out. So they go through all that and then they finally come to us and um, we talk about it and we look at it and we say okay everybody signed off on it and um, let's just add these three or four extra conditions and you're good to go. Or we say no you're not good to go because legally um, Five days, right? Well, and, and we have to have a legal reason to say no. I mean, if you want to build something, we we legitimately have to have a legal reason to say no. We can't just say we don't want you to build something here. There has to be a reason, and so that gives us the time to to um, ferret out the the, the the parcels that aren't buildable. Um, between we live in a unique community. We've got wetlands. We've got uplands. We've got marshes we've got uh, we've got everything you could possibly imagine that could make you not want to build here so we have to fix it to make it all right before you can even start and that's what and you need the professional and we need that it, it's absolutely essential you better understand thank you thank you it's my pleasure